Hi Floss Tube, it's Karen, Recovering Monogamous Stitcher. Uh, today is Friday, February 2, 2024, and I am back with video number 37. Uh, welcome back to so many of you who are my followers. I appreciate it very much. And if you're new and have just come across my channel from whatever source, you're very welcome here. I hope you see something you like and that you will return and that you will subscribe if you are so in inclined. Uh, my subscriber number has been um, steadily, slowly but surely, but steadily going up and I appreciate that very much. And I'm thinking ahead to the 5,000 and when I reach 5,000 I'll do giveaway again. Um, I'm anticipating making some bags or something and. Uh, See what see what patterns I can give away. So so please if you're if you've been watching and haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps my channel. Okay, well um, I have a reminder before I get started about uh, here I stumble on it again. StitchySasanak.etsy.com offers a twenty percent discount to viewers of my channel. And I have the code in the notes below, so you don't have to go searching for it. Uh, she makes nice quality bags, good quality vinyl, well well constructed. Um, you won't be disappointed if you get one. And take advantage of 20% off. I just heard another floss tuber this last week saying that she was giving their channel a discount too. And I'm thinking maybe Sable Stitchers? I could be wrong. Anyway, anyway, they're great bags, so check it out. I've had a good two weeks of stitching. As you can see, I'm back in Florida. Um, I have, so I will have no quilt to share. Uh, so it'll just be all cross stitch and um, we're going to get going on it. I had a good two weeks of stitching, missing only one day of stitching, the day we drove down from Kentucky. Uh, the drive went very well. It was a little dicey until we got south of Chattanooga and then it was fine. Um, so we got back safe and sound thank you all so much for the comments and hoping wishing me good safe travels and and that certainly happened i also had two zoom uh stitching me meetings this uh in the last two weeks one with the central kentucky stitcher group and another with um my friends that i met at StitchCon last year uh so that was fun um we have some uh, some little loose threads left over from last video, uh, video number 36. Uh, there were some comments I wanted to comment on. Yes, the finger chopsticks are hilarious. <laughs> Quite a few of you mentioned that. I agree. And But there was also an interesting discussion on the DMC changes and the changes in dye lots. Um, someone said if you look on the label where it shows the number, if there's a dot next to the number, that is a new dye lot. I didn't know that. And I know that when I did, just before we came, I did some cleaning up of getting all my DMCs bobbinated so I didn't have loose threads, um, you know, skeins left from projects laying around. And there were, I did notice some dots, but didn't know what it was and just <laughs> put them on the labels. So, um, so that's something to be watching for, the dot. Um, another viewer mentioned that the, some of the changes seem to especially be in reds. She specifically mentioned 815 and 816, so you may want to watch for that. Another viewer said that the yellows are noticeably different. Um, someone else said that the Prairie Schooler red, which is 221, is a difference from the older uh, skein. So we're, and another thing someone pointed out that I didn't think of before is we're going to have to start watching out for bleeding which we never, I never worried about with DMC, but um, we need to start looking at them and treating them more like the overdyes. So, so that's that discussion from last, uh, from the last video. I have no finished stitched objects, but I do have whips to share with you. And I'm gonna jump right into it. So first, here's my book of days. Jan well, February, let me get to January here. On January, I got all of my January goals done. I write my goals in this side and I check them off as I do them. So that's January. And I just had one day of stitching in February. And I'll share that with you when I get to it. Okay, so the first whip I worked on um, was Modern Folk Embroidery, Forget Me Not. And this, of course, is that Katie Strachan project that I'm going to be mounting on a box. 
and I didn't bring any boards with me, so sorry. Uh, this is the piece that goes <clears throat> on the front and wraps around to the sides. And I have a dangling thread here. And I'm not going to change it. I can't see what you're seeing. I'm going to have to stand up. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I have, okay, this is the center motif. You can see, whoops, you can see the little uh, blue thread there. I marked my center so I could stay on track. And then I worked that way and worked that way and that way. So I have to finish, finish this one. And then there's one more big one here. And then at the top filling down, there are some medium size and small size, but I have to figure out the spacing for initials because I've planned for three people's initials and birth dates to birth years to be on this, on the front and on the right side and left side. So I have to make sure I have room before I fill in all of the motifs. So that's Forget Me Not, it's coming along. I've recovered, recovered quite nicely from my terrible beginning on that. Uh, the next thing I stitched on was Anne Borat, Hands Across the Sea. And this is the project that is reversible if it's done correctly. But Nicola Parkman says in the introduction, you don't have to make it reversible. You can do regular cross stitches if you want and it'll be beautiful, and it would be beautiful. But I wanted to learn the, I want to learn the um, specialty stitches, so that's what I'm trying to do. I finished the straight row of Montenegrin stitch. Okay, I'm stitching this on 40 count Muddy Duck from Tabby Cat. Now, let me get you close. And I showed you the Montenegrin last time, but you, but you cannot see the details here. You really can't. To you it looks just like cross stitch, but it has um, very definite different texture to it. And then the back, the reversible, the Montenegrin looks the same and the, the other one looks like a box stitch on the back. So that's the reversible of those. Now, the next thing I tried to do was start the, the diagonal. Okay, let me show the picture again. So the two rows I have done are that very top straight row and the next straight row. And I was trying to start, this is Montenegrin, which comes down diagonal, goes straight, transitions to another upward diagonal straight, transitions to downward diagonal, okay. Uh, um, I used paper and pencil to try to figure it out. I thought I had it figured out. I put some of it in and I took it out because it just didn't look right and I don't know what's wrong with it and I just can't figure it out. So, I think I, I really do need someone who knows what they're doing helping me with this. So, I'm not putting her in the naughty chair. I'm still going to be working on it. But um, a couple, when I first started this, one of my um, viewers had recommended a book called Autopsy of the Montenegrin Stitch exhumed, hyphen, exhumed by Amy Mitten. And I see I've mistyped that. Let me get my notes straight. And I can't find it. Um, if any of you know where I can find that, I would appreciate it very much. I think it might help if I have some more explicit instructions. Um, and I, I thank the viewer who mentioned that to me. I just can't find it. I tried Amazon and I don't know where else to go to look. So, so that's where I am on that one. Okay, the next one, Red Deer Sampler. Uh, Sarah of Sarah's Stitchy Spot is also stitching this, and I saw someone else this week show it. Can't remember who, because, you know, the brain doesn't remember. We you see how much I got done, because when I didn't do very well on Anne, I only gave one day to her, and I went to, right to Red Deer, and so I'm gonna work on this one. So this is what I had this basket done last time. This time I came over, did this basket here. Look at my border, look at my border guys. I think I only have like nine flowers left to go. The border has gone almost all the way around. Of course I have the bones of it in, which makes it easy to just pick it up and do a flower. 
So nine more flowers, and I've started on the huge basket in the center. Whoop, whoop. I'm so excited about this. And I just want to stitch on this until I get it done. Right now, I'm so excited about it because I've got the wonderful basket in the middle. And there are some other doodads between the different baskets. And then the row of uh, ghosty kind of letters that go across the bottom. It's not an alphabet. It's letters. They must have meant something to the stitcher. I don't know what they are. but And then those nine flowers. I'm... I'm thinking I'm going to charge ahead on this because I just love it. Red Deer Sampler. Woo! I love looking at it. It's so much fun to stitch on. So I've made great progress on that. And that was my birthday start in 2023. And that's coming up in February. And I'm pretty sure I'll have it done before my birthday. And then I have my next birthday start all set up, ready to go. The next thing I worked on uh, was the Stitch Camp, Winter Stitch Camp. Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher has Stitch Camp every summer and, and in the winter. And the challenge this time is to stitch something that has an animal. So I'm going, I'm stitching... Prairie Schooler 2021, the Santa with all those little animals. And yesterday was February 1st, so I started it and I had posted my uh, materials on Instagram as I was supposed to, and I started it on February 1st. Now, that's a fox, definitely a fox. Oops, look at that color. If, if I had uh, thought when I, I pulled all the DMCs I needed and then brought them down with me, I would have gone to my DMC card and found a color that looks more like a foxy color. That's a very brown. It's not, I think, a fox being more reddish or rust color or something. But anyway, it is what it is. That's the color I that was called for, and that's what I brought. So that's what I'm stitching on. <clears throat> so I've given that a start. And I have, I will put in the notes below the hashtags um, for that camp. Um, so you don't have to go screwing around looking for it. So if you haven't heard of it, go to Colorado Cross Stitcher uh, and watch her video. She gives a great explanation of it. And remember the challenge is to stitch something complete in this month that has an animal. Uh, some people are doing things that have little birds in them and that counts too. So, Okay, so that was my stitching. Um, I am so thrilled with my progress on Red Deer. I can hardly stand it. I have some haul I'll share with you. Uh, the first thing, um, I had mentioned that I had um, a commitment to uh, participate in a stitch along in March with Fat Quarter Shop. And I've been notified that they've canceled that stitch along um, for whatever reason, their schedule or something. But the pattern is available on Fat Quarter Shop's um, site, of course. It's a free PDF. And it says, designed by Susan Aki. It's gorgeous. I have other similar kind of um, stitches I've done that I hang um, <clears throat> together in my sewing. Well, they have been hanging together in my sewing room here in Florida. Now I'll take them back to Kentucky and um, get them up as a group. And this will be a great addition. I plan to stitch this, whether there's a stitch along or not. Um, Susan Aki, wonderful designer. And again, it's free PDF from Fat Quarter Shop. I will put the link in the notes below. Um, you may be interested in stitching that also. She calls for uh, Aura Floss. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to invest in buying the Aura Floss. I'm going to pull from my DMC stash and, um, and do this. But it's beautiful. Beautiful, very quilty looking project. Okay, some other haul I got in thinking um, about getting Maria done and being ready for another red sampler. Even though I do have quite a few patterns for red samplers, I have two collections from um, JBW Designs of red samplers. Um, and there are a few other or various ones that I can do that qualify. Um, but Anna Oman has been on my list, my wish list for quite a while. And I came across it again. I thought, oh, why don't I get that? And then that'll be another choice I could think about for my red sampler. And this is from Leela's Studio. And this is 
an adaptation. It's not a, um, a strict reproduction. She has made some changes, like there was a row at the top that she eliminated and some, some other minor things, but, but it's not a strict um, reproduction. So I'm planning to do that sometime soon. And then when I got that, I ordered some fabric. Um, I think I had something very specific in mind at the time I ordered it and can't remember. And I don't have my, all of my stuff here, so I can't go saying which pattern did I have near the top of my uh, pile. I don't know. So I got some 36 count tin roof from Legacy. That's, that doesn't show, well, you know what tin roof looks like. It's the grayish look. So I'll find what project that was intended for. I also got some John James needles, which I haven't even taken out of the, uh, the package here yet. I got some uh, size 10 beading needles and I got curved needles. And what I wanted the curve because if you remember that I got at Hobby Lobby a spool and it had the, the pin cushion on the top and I had my fancy pins in it. I would like to replace the um, band that's around it with some something I stitched myself and I was anticipating how I would join it in the back. I would want a curved needle. So I got the curved needles in anticipation of that. Okay, the next thing that has been on my wish list for quite a while is Anne Got from Needlework Press. Um, I love the red house. I love that huge red flower and all there's so much red in it. I love it. And I also like the animals in the grass down here. Yes, I know what what Brenda calls the grass in uh, something else that she has stitched, but I look forward to that. The thing I had hesitated on this is because it says it's a gift for my dear aunt, and I had to get past that, but it is a reproduction, and I plan to stitch it that way. Now, if you think you might want to do this and don't want to have my dear aunt, they have um, charted other things you can put in there, mother, father, brother, friend, cousin, girl, boy, child. And also, you can replace it with a little verse they have charted. Oh, let me see, what's it say? It's a very nice little verse, where is it? Find happiness in simple things. And that would fit up there. So there are ways it can be altered if you don't like um, um, the, my dear aunt. <clears throat> but I'm going to stick with that because it's a reproduction and I would stitch it as a reproduction. Okay, here I have floss tube throat. <clears throat> there are things that happen on floss tube <laughs> that don't happen in the rest of life. I get on a floss tube and I start losing my voice, <clears throat> need a drink, uh, my nose starts to run. I've heard other people, they, they rub the noses. And floss tube, and the worst thing is brain fog. <laughs> You're going, uh, what was the name of that designer? Uh, what was the that floss tuber's name? What's my name? It's uh, anyway. Sorry, I've got to take a drink. <sighs> okay, and got needlework press, and I kitted it up. I got it's I got 46 count caramel macchiato from Fiber on a Whim. It's kind of it's and it's a really nice match I think well now okay now look this looks really green and it's not green in person it's a it's a nicer match to what I see in the picture so that's the caramel macchiato fiber on a whim 46 count and I got the called for classic color work colors Let's see the reds dark red Nice bright red, greens, pink, yellow. I'll just take this out a second. Maybe it'll look better if it's not in the bag. I haven't done that yet. Okay, so there they are. Now, see, it would be so nice if I had brought boards, but I didn't. See there, now that color looks more gold, which is more like the color on the cover of the pattern. 
So that'll be Ann got. So another one kitted, ready to go. Don't know when yet, but it will be, it will go. Okay, again, zipped right through this. So uh, my plans, I'm planning to stitch red deer until it's done. I'm thinking that's what I'm going to jump in on. Even though um, it's, I try to do the hats, which is hands across the sea, hats first week of the month, Sal. I'll do the seven days, but it won't be the first week of the month. Um, I'm gonna get that red deer done. And um, then I will give seven days to Maria because she's my focus. Will I finish her? Maybe, question mark, could be, we'll see. I'm not gonna worry about it if I don't. I'm going to give um, oh, the Prairie Schooler Santa for the winter stitch camp. I'm going to stitch that to a finish. I need to give five days to forget me not. Now all of this will not get done before the next floss tube, but that's my plan. That's what I'm working ahead on or what I'm moving forward on. My next floss tube will be on February 16. I'm guessing we will still be here. We have a showing scheduled coming up, so we'll see, fingers crossed. Um, but um, I'm really busy with the Shuffleboard Club. I'm an officer, so I have some duties that I'm obligated to do, but when we leave, we will have to leave, and so someone else will have to step in and take over the position. So I'm not, I'm not anticipating that, oh, I have to stay through the end of the season, not necessarily. Well, so we'll see. The showing is coming up. Um, I have my fingers crossed and we'll see. So, um, but I'm sure even if it sells, we won't be back in Kentucky in two weeks. I don't think. Just guessing. Anyway. Okay, floss tubers, uh, have two weeks of happy stitching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.